Hi everyone. So this video is looking again at the immune system and specifically we are looking at T lymphocytes or T cells. Okay, so there are two kinds of T cells. Both kinds are produced in the bone marrow, the same as B cells, but the T cells actually move to the thymus gland and that's where they mature. So that's why they're called T cell, T for thymus. Um, there are two kinds of T cells. We have helper cells, well T helper cells, um, and then we have T killer cells. And the T killer cells are also known as cytotoxic T cells. So for these T cells to work, they need to be activated. Um, and they are activated by something called an antigen presenting cell. Um, and until they're activated by an antigen presenting cell, they aren't able to function. Um, it, they, they, they can't do their job. So let's just have a very brief look then at how these T cells are activated. Um, as I said, it's something called an antigen presenting cell, which is very important. So what you can see here, um, this is a host cell. So that's really important. So antigen, pre pre antigen presenting cells or APCs um, are part of the host cell, so a person's own cells. Um, and what you can see on the outside here are antigens. So there are two possibilities. This APC could be a host cell uh, that has been infected already. So there's um, the pathogen, so maybe bacteria cell uh, or cells inside this host cell. Um, and part of the cell's response to that infection, um, it's been able to present the antigens from that pathogen on the outside. Um, it's it's sort of like a sort of a, a help signal, if you like. The second possibility is that this antigen presenting cell is actually a pathogen. Uh, sorry, it's a phagocyte. Um, if I just go back a bit. So if this is a phagocyte, then again, the bacterial cells uh, will have gone inside it, but not because it's been infected, because the phagocyte has actually engulfed it and then it will have destroyed it. But during that process where the, uh, the pathogen is digested by the enzymes inside the phagocyte, rather than digesting it completely, fragments of the antigens are, um, remain intact and they are what is presented here. So the APC, it has to be from the person's own cells, but it could either be infected or it could be a phagocyte. So to activate the T cells, so here's our T cell. So this is a T cell that has not yet been activated. You can see on the outside of the T cell here, there are receptors. So they're not antibodies. You only find antibodies on the B cells, um, but they do a very similar job. And that means that these receptors are able to bind with the antigens on the outside of the APC. And when that happens, when the T cell binds with the APC, that uh, T cell is activated. So if we look at T helper cells, first of all, um, an activated helper T cell or T helper cell, it doesn't matter which way around you say it, uh, two things can happen to it. And it's very similar to what happens with B cells. The activation process um, triggers it to um, divide by mitosis and then it will differentiate and either become memory T helper cells or it will become a cell which then uh, stimulates B cells. So from this point here, we get the same division by mitosis and then the differentiation. We'll look at uh, th this uh, stimulating B cells. That happens because the some of those activated helper T cells, um, after they divided by mitosis, some of them will release cytokines. Um, and those cytokines are what stimulates the B cells to then divide and the B cells will then become plasma cells or the B cells will become memory cells. So that's why it's called a helper T cell because once it's activated, the T cells help the B cells to then produce plasma and memory cells themselves. B cells do not have to be stimulated by the cytokines, um, but if they are, it makes the whole immune response process um, quicker and stronger. So T killer cells then, 
Um, once they're activated, they also can be triggered to divide by mitosis. Um, that means that some of them end up as memory T killer cells. Um, but a lot of them go off and their job is then to destroy the infected body cell. Um, so remember this activated T killer cell here at the beginning, it was activated because it bound onto an antigen presenting cell. So it could either be that same antigen presenting cell or it could end up binding with another antigen presenting cell. If we say that this is our APC, so this is, the, this is our um, infected body cell here. So it's an infected body cell, and there's our T killer cell, which is bound onto the antigen. The T killer cell contains vesicles uh, with lots of toxins. Actually, if I just go back a step. So when they bind, um, one thing that uh, you don't always see clearly, but when they bind, they're in a position such that the membrane, the cell surface membrane of the infected cell, and the T killer cell are in contact with one another. So inside our T killer cell we have vesicles and those vesicles contain hydrolytic enzymes. So the vesicles move towards the cell surface membrane, they fuse with it and they release their contents into the host cell. Um, remember this is our own body cell so it means that the uh, the T killer cell is destroying one of our own cells, but it's worth it to destroy the pathogen at the same time. The toxin destroyed, there's lots of them. Um, hydrogen peroxide is one of the chemicals that can be released to destroy um, the host cell. Okay, that's it. Thank you.